In this video, we are going to be talking about exponent rules. So we're going to go over these eight different rules here. First off, I'd like to review what an exponent is. So if we had 2 to the power of 5, or another example, x to the power of n. 2 to the power of 5 is the same thing as saying 2 times 2, 5 times. And x to the power of n would be saying x times x times x to whatever n is equal to. We are looking at an exponent, our base for these two examples. 2 would be our base, and x would be our base, and then our exponent is 5, or the letter n. So maybe that is fairly simple review, but I just wanted to touch base with that. So the first rule we're going to go over is the product rule. And that rule states that if we had x to the power of n times x to the power of m, that would be equal to x to the power of m plus n. So when multiplying two expressions with the same base, you can add the exponents. So let's work through that. So if we had 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of 4, 3 plus 4 would be 7. So we have 2 to the power of 7. Now that is true because if we wrote this out, we would have 2 times 2 times 2, and then times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which would be 7 twos, hence 2 to the power of 7. So let's move on to our next rule. We have the quotient rule. So the quotient rule states that if we had x to the power of n over x to the power of m, we would have x to the power of n minus m. So simi similarly as the product rule, instead of adding, we are subtracting. So when dividing two expressions with the same base, we subtract the exponents. So let's run through an example. If we had 3 to the power of 5 over 3 squared, we would do 5 minus 2, right? So it would be 3 to the power of 5 minus 2, which would equal 3 to the power of 3. So let's work through that to prove that that is true. So we can rewrite 3 to the power of 5 as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 over 3 squared, which would be 3 times 3. Now when these cancel out, right, we would cancel there and there, we would be left with 3 threes or 3 cubed. So let's move on to our next rule. So the power rule. If we have x to the power of n to the power of m, that would be equal to x to the power of n times m. So when raising a power to a power, we can multiply those powers or exponents. So again, let's work through an example with this one. So if we had 5 to the power of 4 to the power of 3, that would be equal to 5 to the power of 4 times 3, which would be equal to 5 to the power of 12. So that can be true because 5 to the power of 4 to the power of 3 can be rewritten as 5 to the power of 4 times 5 to the power of 4 times 5 to the power of 4. And once we do that, we can expand that even further into our four fives, right? And if you count up all those fives, you're going to realize pretty quick that if you multiply your three sets of four fives, you're left with 12. 12 fives, or 5 to the power of 12. And that is the power rule. Our next rule is the power of zero. And that states that any value x to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So when raising any expression to 0, it is equal to 1, with one exception. When 0 is raised to the power of 0, it is undefined. So any other value raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So let's go ahead and prove that. So 1 can be rewritten as 3 to the power of 2 over 3 to the power of 2, right? You could really put anything in there. We could have 2 squared over 2 squared, or 5 to the power of 6 over 5 to the power of 6. But that would be equal to 3 to the power of 2 minus 2, based on the quotient rule that we just learned. And 3 to the power of 2 minus 2 would be 3 to the power of 0, which 
in turn would be equal to 1. Our next rule is the negative exponents. So if we had x to the power of negative n, that would be equal to 1 over x to the power of n. So let's just work through this one and show why it is true. So if we had 5 to the power of 7 times 5 to the power of negative 7, using our product rule, we would have 5 to the power of 7 plus our negative 7, which would be equal to 5 to the power of 0, or 1. Now, if we applied this principle of x to the power of negative n and rewrote this, we would have 5 to the power of 7 times 1 over 5 to the power of 7, which would be equal to 5 to the power of 7 over 5 to the power of 7, which is equal to 1. So in order for our product rule to be true, our negative exponents rule also needs to be true. And in this case, we proved it to be so. So let's move on to fractional exponents. So with fra fractional exponents, if we had x to the power of 1 over n, that would be equal to the nth root of x. So what that's saying is, if, for example, we had 9 to the power of 1 half, that would be equal to the square root of 9, right? Or taking the second root. Typically, we don't write it with the superscript with the 2 there but that would be equal to 3. Or another example, if we had 64 to the power of 1 over 3, it's the same thing as taking the third root of 64, which would be equal to 4. And that is fractional exponents. So another way we can look at this is if we had 3 to the power of 1 over 3 to the power of 3, using our powers rule, we can write it as 3 to the power of 1 over 3 times 3, which would be equal to 3 to the power of 1, which is equal to 3. So let's, let's keep moving here. Next we're going to talk about distributing an exponent over a product. So if we had x times y to the power of n, that would be equal to x to the power of n times y to the power of n. So with this example, we have 4 times 6 to the power of 3. And we can take that exponent, that n value, and apply it to both numbers. So we'd have 4 to the power of 3 times 6 to the power of 3. Now, let's go ahead and prove why that is true. So we can rewrite 4 times 6 to the power of 3 as 4 times 6 times itself 3 times. And now if we solved for that, we can just rewrite the order of the multiplication, right? So we can put 4 times 4 times 4, and then 6 times 6 times 6. And that is the same thing as saying 4 to the power of 3 times 6 to the power of 3. Let's move on to our eighth rule we're going to be talking about. So distributing an exponent over a quotient. So simil similar as the last one, but instead we have a quotient. So if we had x over y to the power of n, that would be equal to x to the power of n over y to the power of n. So if we had 3 over 7 to the power of 5, we can rewrite that as 3 to the power of 5 over 7 to the power of 5. And let's go ahead and prove that to be so. So if we took 3 over 7 to the power of 5, that would be equal to saying 3 over 7 times itself 5 times, right? And if we solved for that, we would have 3 times 3 times 3, 5 times as the numerator, and then the denominator would be 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7, which in turn is equal to 3 to the power of 5 over 7 to the power of 5. And as a wrap-up, these are the eight topics we covered in this exponent rules video. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Otherwise, thank you for watching.